Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmad again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 9 and in this video I'm going to show you all the new changes in Google Apps that I spotted in November 2020. So let's see what's new with Google Apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Now let's start with Gcam and if you are using any Pixel device and installed Gcam version 8.1 from the Google Play Store you will get the new camera interface. I talked about it in detail in one of my previous videos so if you didn't check it please click the link showing now on the screen or in the description below. Beside the new interface you will get two new features. The first feature you get is under the video tab as you see here there is a new button when you tap on it it will give you two video stabilization modes. The first one is the standard which we already have for a while and the new one is called cinematic pan it says here in the description for smooth panning shots half speed and muted so when you activate this mode and pan your camera like this you will get a really nice cinematic effect and you can see now some samples playing on the screen the videos recorded using this mode are 60 frames per second and the output file is 30 frames only which means it's a slow motion video at half speed and the video is muted so as you see here the mic is disabled and that makes sense because it's a slow motion video. The cinematic pan feature is only available on the Pixel 4 devices and later so if you are using the 4, 4XL, 4A, 4A 5G and the Pixel 5 you will be able to see the cinematic pan option but if you have Gcam version 8.1 on the Pixel 3, 3A 2 and the original Pixel you will not be able to find it. There is also another limitation if you are using the feature on any device other than the 5 and the 4A 5G the maximum resolution you get is 1080p. So as you see here I have the cinematic pan active on my Pixel 4A and when I try to change the video resolution I don't have any option because the maximum resolution is 1080p. And that's exactly the case with the Pixel 4 because the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 4 cannot record 4K60 and as I mentioned before the cinematic pan videos gets recorded at 60 frames per second. But if you take a look here at the Pixel 5 and go to the video mode and activate cinematic pan as you see I have the ability to record in 4K so that's a limitation for older Pixel models only. The second feature you get with Gcam version 8.1 is called storage saver. So when you go to settings you will see a new menu item here called device storage. When you go inside the first thing you see at the top is how much storage remaining on the device and it will also tell you how many photos and how many minutes of videos can be recorded in this remaining storage. And the second option you get is called storage saver. This feature will help you save space on your device by optimizing the photos and the videos saved on your local storage and if you want to know how it works tap on the blue text that says settings that will change. Here it will show you all the changes starting from the raw images will be saved as JPEG only, the store videos efficiently will be turned on, motion photos will be saved as still images, camera photo resolution will be set to medium, social media depth data will not be saved, video resolution will be set to a maximum resolution of full HD and 30 frames per second. When you turn on the feature for example and try to record a 4K video you will get this warning telling you that you need to turn the feature off. When you tap on go to settings it will take you to the device storage menu so you can turn it off. There is also another toggle related to the same feature called turn off when storage is available. If you have one gigabyte of storage available or more the feature will turn off automatically. So if you have this toggle on the feature will turn off automatically if you have one gigabyte of storage available or more. And finally you have free up space and this one will open the files app to free up some space on your device. It doesn't have to be photos, it can be anything. So that's pretty much it with the new device storage options. Next, Google Assistant. And the first change you get is the ability to schedule your lights on or off. So let me show you an example. Turn on my living room lights in two minutes. As you see here it will turn on the lights at 11.40 pm and now it's 11.38. You can also specify the exact time. Turn on my living room lights at 11.45 pm. And the same thing happened. You can also schedule your lights based on the sunset or sunrise. Turn off my living room lights tomorrow at sunrise. 
so it will turn off my living room lights automatically at 6 50 a.m and so on but keep in mind there is no way to cancel the schedule for the time being so if you made a mistake your lights might turn on while sleeping but google confirmed that they will fix it in the future and you should be able to modify your schedule the second change you get is under the snapshot page now there is a new plus sign and when you tap on it it will allow you to add a new reminder when you tap on the reminder here it will give you the card to set the reminder based on the time or the place tapping on this text box you will be able to add the text for your reminder or you can simply use the microphone remind me to call my mom tomorrow at 5 30 pm so now the reminder is saved and added to my snapshot page next google assistant got a new interface for sending voice messages so let me show you how it looks Send a voice message to Imad Hussein. All right, what do you want to say? This is a test message. So Ready this is how the new interface look like. You have the play button to listen to your voice message. You can delete it from here or simply send it. And finally, the ability to connect your Fitbit account with your Google Assistant. Just to go to your Assistant settings page, scroll down until you find wellness and under wellness you have a sleep and here you have the connect button for your fitbit account by connecting your fitbit account you will be able to ask about your sleep of yesterday how many hours and how was it but it only works for one day for the time being it's only supported now by fitbit as well but expect more to come in the future next google discover and if you are using it for checking the latest news and articles now you will get a small heart icon beside each article and when you tap on it you will give quick feedback to google to suggest similar articles like this one in the future previously we used to get a toggle to choose between show more or show less but now it's pretty straightforward just a heart icon to tap on and you are good to go if you want to give an opposite feedback simply tap on the three dots over here and you can choose not interested in this story not interested in the category or don't show stories from the source itself you can also manage interests report content or send feedback next the google home app and the first change is under lights now the room lights got new toggles as you see here previously they used to share the same on and off buttons you see under the old section but now they got normal toggles and the toggles also represent the current state of your lights previously when they used to have the on and off buttons you will not be able to tell if your lights are on or off the second change is under routines now you will get a play button next to each routine to start it immediately when you tap on the name of the routine you will be able to do your edits and finally you can choose the device to play your routine on from here and the third change is under media if you are casting any media to your smart devices now you will get a new redesigned media controls card as you see here i'm casting media from youtube music to my smart speaker and i can control the volume i can seek forward or backward i can change tracks play and pause and so on but what's better here is the ability to choose the devices from here and adjust them individually so for example i can uh, uh, cast the same media to my chromecast at the same time by taking the checkbox next to it and here i can control the volumes separately as you see here for my speaker and for my living room chromecast or i can adjust both of them together using the slider at the top i can also stop casting by tapping on this stop button here so it will stop casting for me you can also create a group from this page by choosing the smart devices you want to add as a group and give them a name and you will be good to go next youtube and the first change is in the icons as you see now all the icons are very minimal there is no fill color in the icons all you see is the outline only that applies also to the icons you see in your playback screen also under the hidden menu you see the same change in the icons so it's all over the place the second change is in the description when you tap on the name of the video to check the description now you get a separate card that will allow you to scroll through the description in a nice way plus you can drag this card to the top of the screen so you will get a full screen experience which is a lot easier for you to scroll plus you get a small x here when you tap on it it will dismiss the card or you can simply drag it down and continue watching next if you are using the youtube premium subscription and tap on your account page you will get a new item here called your premium benefits 
and when you tap on it it will show you how many hours you played videos without any ads and that will give you an idea about how beneficial is your YouTube premium subscription. Next, YouTube app for Android TV now support 8K videos. And finally, if you are playing music or podcasts on your desktop in the background, you might get audio only ads instead of video ads. Next, YouTube music. And the first change is under the mixed for you tab. As you see here, the My Super Mix got a new icon, plus you will get seven different mixes and each one will include different artists. And as you see here in the description, it will give you an idea about the type of artists included in this mix. Plus, you get also the new release mix and the discover mix we already have, and they also got new icons. And you will see a similar behavior under three tabs out of the four tabs on the top. So, for example, when you go to workout, you will see there are new mixes as well. But here you have only three extra mixes created for you instead of seven under the home screen. And that's the same thing under focus, relax, but there is nothing under commute. And when you scroll down, you will see a new section here called quick picks. And here you can see 20 different songs to choose from. And when you tap on any, it will create a playlist based on your selection. And finally, Google is working on a year in review playlist that will show you the top songs that you played throughout the year. Next. Gboard and the Emoji Kitchen feature now has 14,000 new emoji combinations that didn't exist before. And if you are not familiar with the Emoji Kitchen, this feature can allow you to create mashup stickers based on two different emojis or more. So as you see here, when I combined those two emojis, now I have a sticker that matches the two. Now Google added 14,000 new combinations that you can choose from. Next. Google Messages. And now Google is rolling out end-to-end -end encryption for the RCS messaging service. So all your messages should be encrypted and no one can see it. The second change is in the keyboard animation. As you see here, when I tap on the text box, the keyboard animation is a lot nicer than before. I do really like it and I hope all Android apps support the same animation. Next. Google Maps. And the first change is in the navigation bar. As you see here, the commute tab no longer exists and it has been replaced with the go tab. Here you can pin more than one location and quickly navigate to them by tapping on the start button. And when you scroll down, you will see suggested places that you can pin using the pin icon right here. And if you want to pin another location that you don't see in the suggested list, you can simply search for the location you want and then tap on directions and you will see here the button which is called pin tap on it and when you go back to your go tap you will see dubai mall is now pinned if you want to unpin a trip you can simply tap on it and it will take you back to the same directions page and you will see the pinned button tap on it again it will unpin it for you and finally if you want to delete the full list of pinned trips you can simply go to the settings and then you see here pinned trips settings go inside and here is a button called delete pinned trips and that will delete everything for you and the second feature is the new real-time transit crowdness so for example if you want to go to mall of the emirates and then go to the transit tab choose the route you want and here you will get a live update about the crowdness of this area and when you tap on it, you can also check the busy hours of this location. Or you can also add your own feedback. So if you scroll down a little bit, you will see here in some places, you can uh, put your feedback about the crowdness by tapping the plus sign and choose one of these options. And you have also multiple things to do like accessibility, temperature, security, and so on. And finally, if you made a food order from Google Maps, now you can check the status of the takeout and the delivery. But this feature only supported in six countries at the moment. And you can see them now on the screen. Next, Google Chrome. And currently, if you have your credit card information saved in Google Chrome, every time you try to autofill the credit card information on any website, Google Chrome will ask you for the CVV number to verify yourself. But you can overcome this by activating the biometrics verification, like using the uh, fingerprint sensor or the face unlock of your device. To activate the feature, just go to Google Chrome settings, then go to payment methods, and here you will see screen lock toggle. Once you turn it on, the feature will be activated and you can use your biometric uh, authentication methods.
But keep in mind, this feature will not work straight away after activation, but you need to make at least one successful payment using your normal CVV number, and it will work after that as expected. Next, Gmail. And now you can add more recipients to your emails from the body of your message. So for example, when you type the add sign or the plus sign on your keyboard and then start typing the name of the person as you see here now started to show me the email addresses saved in my contact list that matches the name i'm typing here after the add sign and once i choose the email it will automatically autofill the name of the person and you can add as much people as you can the same way so as you see here i can add people that way and when you delete the name from the body of your message, it will delete the email from the to field as well. Next, Google Photos. And the first change is under the search tab. When you scroll down, you will see here something called help improve Google Photos. When you tap on it, it will ask you a set of questions about your photos to help improve the Google Photos algorithm. And when you tap on start, you will get different categories of the questions. The first category here is called understanding your photos and here it will ask you what's important in the photos it's showing you. So for example here I'm typing dog and then I will hit submit. You can also put more than one uh, interest in the same photo. So for example here I'm going to type dog and myself. So here dog and then put a comma and then type my name. and then I hit submit and so on. You can skip the photo or you can go to the previous one to do modifications if you want to. The second category is called printing preferences. It will ask you would you like to print this kind of photo. You can choose yes or no. Next you have something called made for you and here it will ask you do you like this photo or you don't like it and so on. And finally you have holiday photos. Here it will show you a photo and ask you if it's related to a specific festival or a holiday that you have in your country and that's pretty much it you can keep doing or answering the questions uh, and if you are done tap on done for now and you are good to go next google photos will start to suggest doodle collage designs that will appear under your recent highlights in the memories area but i didn't get any for the time being anyways i will show you a sample on the screen now to get an idea about how it looks next google fit and it got a complete redesign as you see here it looks a lot cleaner and you have a lot of white space in the home screen you also get all your information stacked on top of each other you have here your daily goals you have your last workout map you have sleep duration heart rate the weight blood pressure heart points steps and you can also add uh, blood pressure add weight add activity or track your workout for example by tapping here the plus sign you can add your weight and put the date for your weight to start tracking your weight progress you can also get information about your sleep if you have a sleep tracking device but i don't have one for the time being and so on so i do like the new design it looks a lot cleaner and everything is in the first page which is very nice and the part of the Google Fit redesign applies to the Wear OS as well. So now I have more than one new tile that can help me do a lot of stuff on my watch. And the first one is the Breathe uh, tile. And this tile, you can quickly do a breathing exercise. Uh, you can choose between two or four minutes quickly, or you can also tap on this list icon to choose the custom number of minutes you want. You have this nice wheel to choose the amount of time you want you have up to 10 minutes and then tap on the check mark it will help you to breathe it will first ask you to relax and then you will get a vibration while doing the exercise with the exhale and inhale not only this but when you also tap on the tile it will open the google fit app to show you the progress of your breathing exercises throughout the week but if you also have um, a heart rate monitor in your watch, I don't have one at the moment. If you have one, it will show you a graph of your heart rate while doing your breathing exercises. And the second tile is for the heart points and the steps. There isn't much to talk about here, but when you tap on it, you will get more information about your today and the whole week activity as well. From here, you can uh, get access to quick shortcuts like the heart rate, 
the workout, the breathe, and also you can go to settings from here to change a lot of stuff. You can change the activity goals. You can edit your profile. You can change the units, change the account of your fit application, uh, track physical activity, diagnostics, use location, Bluetooth sensors if you have any, and so on. The third one is for the workouts. From here, you can get quick access to some workouts and you can also tap on the list icon to see the full list of exercises you can choose from. You have running, walking, biking, treadmill, and so on. Whatever type of workout you want to choose, let's go for walking. And once you choose your exercise, the watch will load for a few seconds and then it will acquire your GPS location. Then you can choose from here the goal you want to set for yourself. This goal can be in terms of calories. You can choose how many calories you want to burn. You, want, you can choose the distance you want to walk. You can choose the hard points, the steps, the time, and so on. So let's set any target, like the distance, for example. And I'm going to choose five kilometers and hit the tick icon and then I'm gonna tap on play. It will first vibrate while counting down and then it will start the activity. So as you see now started to count and the first thing you see is the number of calories. When you tap on it you can uh, see the clock. When you tap again you can see the steps and then you can see also the kilometers. At the top you see the average speed and here the time elapsed. You can also uh, swipe to the left to see more information like the hard points for example and when you swipe to the right you will see also the music uh, player uh, set the music player controls so for example if I played any music from my mobile phone and tapped on this icon I will be able to see the song and also the media controls like the volume and changing track and so on. Here I can stop the activity or I can pause it and then run it again. I think that's pretty much it under this um, tile. So it's really helpful and I do like the design. It's very straightforward and easy to use. And the last tile is for your hard points only. It doesn't do anything different and when you tap on it, it will give you the same information we saw in the other tile, the ring style that shows you the steps and the hard points. This one will do the same thing. It will show you also some shortcuts and some information about your hard points. And that's pretty much it. One more new tile for Wear OS, but this one is not related to Google Fit. It's the new weather tile. As you see, it looks a lot better. And when you tap on it, you will get all the information you need to know about the weather for today. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the new changes in Google Apps that I spotted in November 2020. I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.